Good morning, everybody. It's another new day. We're in Deer River, Minnesota. This is where we went to sleep last night, so we woke up in the exact same spot. It's great. I'm just gonna go across the street where I can get a coffee, and we'll get this day started. I wanna get down to Brainerd, unload, and then figure out what's next. in here at their little uh, plaza, their store. Let's get out there. It's gonna be a good day. I hope, because there's a, a storm warning or a winter storm, winter snowfall warning. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be that bad looking at what they're expecting. They're expecting two to four inches of snow. So uh, it's probably just gonna come down real heavy for like a short while and that's why they're warning us. Because two to four inches isn't really like the end of the world, but if it all comes at once, yeah, that's quite a bit. So that's supposed to be a little ways down here toward Brainerd. Judging by how it is in town here, it's usually worse outside of town, right? So, uh, it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better. Here, I'm all geared up. 
we're gonna do this inside again so I'll talk to you after I'm done now I go inside there to see if there's room for me if there is we open up the big door I drive in take my tarps off roll them up take my straps off roll them up and then they unload me and then I back out it's easy as that and I don't know what's next yet I haven't heard anything so uh, stay tuned Nobody coming? Nobody coming? Nah, yo. America! Yeah! America! Beer cave! I always find that funny. <laughs> Anyways. We have our reload in Bemidji, Minnesota waiting for us on the ground. It's doing no good on the ground. I need to put it on my trailer. I'm gonna tie it down and bring it back to Winnipeg. Somebody up there needs wood. At one kilometer, turn right on Washington Street and then 210. Isn't it, it is interesting though. Someone pointed this out in my comments. There's more than one person has pointed this out. Isn't it interesting how I load up lumber in Canada, I take it down to Minnesota, and then I load up lumber in Minnesota and take it up to Canada. <laughs> right? I'm not complaining. It gives me something to do, all right? But sometimes you're just scratching your head like there's, you, there seems to be a, sh a shorter route to this. <laughs> but don't tell anybody, because I like the work, okay? I, don't, I like it, I like it. I'll bring, I'll bring Canadian lumber down here to America, and then I'll bring American lumber back up to Canada. Don't tell anybody that we could just, you know, shorten that up, no, no. I, I like it this way. <laughs> I find it funny, I do, but like I said, whatever. Turn right on Washington Street and then 210. The lumber is different. Okay, let's, let's, there's a bigger story to it. And it's not just simple as that. The lumber I bring down here is like finished lumber, very special lumber. That's why it gets a special tarp. The lumber I'm picking up in Bemidji, I don't think we'll need a tarp. It's probably just, you know, two by four lumber. Which is interesting because we have an abundance of lumber in Canada. But this lumber is obviously very special. In 200 meters, <laughs> turn right on Washington Street and then 210. Everybody makes it in just a little bit of a different way. And sometimes it is easier to get lumber from Minnesota up into Winnipeg than it is all the way from Edmonton to Winnipeg, right? It's just shorter, maybe cheaper. There is a reason why it happens. It doesn't have to make sense. It makes sense to someone, that's all that matters. There's a car coming, I'll wait. I'll have a green light right away, I think. Five kilometers. Or three miles. I got a compliment on Old Blue from the receiver here. Those guys are great guys. I was able to sit there and have a little bit of coffee with them. They uh, gave me a coffee, they're very kind guys sit there and chit chat for about five minutes. They didn't have anything, uh, I guess they were on break right then. And they had nobody waiting behind me. So I said, hey, yeah, take five minutes, chat with them a bit, good guys. And it's, hey, it's free coffee. Who turns down free coffee? Crazy people, that's who. Do I look crazy? I'm not crazy. You get offered a free coffee, you accept. There's a snowstorm rolling in. I'm trying to beat it. I'm gonna get reloaded and get out of here. But yeah, anyway, the receiver complimented Old Blue, said, I've never seen your truck so clean. How'd you keep it so clean? Uh, I don't know. I washed it at PBX like, last weekend, and then I drove all the way to Kenora and all the way down here, and it stayed clean in this. I don't know what PBX used on it, but whatever it is, <laughs> thumbs up from me. But if you want to pass me, you can come on past me. I don't mind. Oh, he wants to turn. Okay. Thought he was just sit sitting beside me there. I've said it before. Uh, when you're passing a truck, the best practice and the best etiquette when passing a semi truck is to get past them as fast, well, not as fast as you can, but you know, don't loiter beside the truck. You want to pass us? Get past. If you don't really want to go faster than us, just stay back. That's my advice. Because driving a big truck like this, you never know, like, I'm scanning the whole road in front of me here, right? I'm watching for, you know, skid steers coming out that are clearing snow. 
I'm watching for kids that are, you know, running ahead of their parents and uh, maybe trip over the snowbank, fall into the road. I'm watching for other drivers on the road that might, you know, lose control or start slipping around. If at all possible, I like to have the lane beside me clear, just in case if, like, a kid jumps out from behind that sign and falls in front of me, I have an extra lane just sort of move to the side, right? And on the highway, it's more so if deer jump out in front of me or wildlife or whatever. I like to have the lane beside me clear if possible. Like, this I understand is not always possible, but especially on the highway, if you want to pass the truck, pass the truck. If you aren't sure, just stay behind. You drivers out there know exactly what I'm talking about, right? When you have a car who's obviously got the cruise control on, you know they can go faster, but they just leave it on cruise control and literally take 12 miles to pass you. Just creeping past. Whoa! Every trucker knows exactly what I'm talking about. They're all nodding their heads right now. You wanna pass? Pass! Right? In town it's a little different, I know, I know. It's not all black and white. I got a lot of snow here, and there's more on the way. Like, look at this place. Man, if you're not careful, people are gonna start thinking it's cold outside. And there's Paul Bunyan. I think right over here is a town called Baxter, right? And their claim to fame is it's the start of the Paul Bunyan Trail, I think. I think it's right over here on this side of the river. There's a big sign, they're all proud of it. Good for you, you should be proud of it. Paul Bunyan, a Minnesota hero, I guess, right? Must have been one of the trailblazers. You know, one of the first, first to make it out here, maybe. I gotta read up on it. I know Paul Bunyan, I know the name. Everybody knows Paul Bunyan, the name, but I don't know what his actual story is, but he's definitely connected to Northern Minnesota here, or Central Minnesota, wherever we are. American flags. America, Nissan. Da -na -na, da -na -na -na. That's not a Nissan dealer. That's a Dodge dealership. Why'd they have a Nissan sign? Is it Nissan or is it Nissan? Nissan, 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 Nissan. Nissan. I don't know. Baxter. See right here. It says, "Welcome to Baxter, start of the Paul Bunyan Trail." Huh? I knew I wasn't lying to you. I was pretty sure anyways, like 80% sure I wasn't lying to you. I think I'm gonna fuel up in Pillager up ahead here, or maybe in Bemidji. I gotta figure that out yet. I'm gonna grab some fuel down here in the States, and we're gonna try to outrun the storm. Is this a truck stop? Is this a truck stop? Can I get in there with a truck? I don't think so. Nope. Nope, not a truck stop. Definitely not a truck stop. Looking for a truck stop. I see another one coming up ahead here. Maybe that's a truck stop. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna get yourself in a pickle. If you pull into a lot that's not designed for big trucks, and suddenly it gets really busy there, good luck getting out. You might even end up on YouTube. Not on my channel, I don't do those kind of videos, but <laughs> you know the videos I'm talking about. Every time a trucker does something dumb, they end up on YouTube somewhere. The whole goal of the day is not to end up on that part of YouTube. We're heading north up, uh, what is this, Minnesota 200? I think this might be a truck stop up here. Past all this stuff, there's a speedway or something. A big sign, usually if it's a really big sign, that means it's a truck stop, because they want all the truckers to see it. Come, spend your money here, come on down. See right there, speedway. I'm pretty sure that's a truck stop. I'm pretty sure of it. Nope, definitely not a truck stop.
They tricked me. Not very nice. We'll find one yet. Found ourselves something. Hopefully this is a truck stop. I mean, they got diesel pumps, so there's got to be space for trucks in there, right? What is this, Cenex? Continue on this road for 23 kilometers. Nah, I think I'm going to pull in here, Karen. Oh yeah, look at this. Lots of room. I'm going to park back here. Nice, out of the way. side real quick what is rattling man I'll give old blue a few minutes to rest here I'm gonna go in there and see what they uh, what they got inside there what is on the menu today, Trucker Josh, you ask? Chester's three-piece chicken meal. Oh. Whoa, man. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Oh, I can hardly contain myself. Oh, yeah, with the macaroni and cheese. Mmm.
arrived at your destination on the right side, gas track. parking spots in the back there already right on i was kind of worried it would be full i don't have any time to go anywhere else i got six minutes to miss six minutes left on my clock six minutes to park and i want to park straight ahead there i don't know if this guy's going to take that spot or not aha he's not good turn around and back in beside this empty trailer of lumber I mean loaded trailer of lumber I can't even get my words straight apparently a lot of drop trailers here taking up a lot of space for drivers that need it Make sure that uh, I don't gotta move over more. I think I left enough space here. Yeah, I left enough space for another guy. There we go. I don't really want a neighbor, but I didn't want to take up both spots. I mean, I could have. Could have just taken up both spots and I wouldn't have had any neighbors. Because on this side, I've got a snowbank. <laughs> but I just can't bring myself to be that driver. I only need to take up one spot. It's fine. It's fine. It's gonna be cold tonight anyway, so it might be an idling kind of night. It's supposed to go down to minus 31 Celsius. Ah, one second here. Minus 31 Celsius. Do you really wanna know? I mean, I don't know if you wanna know. What is minus 31 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 31 degrees Celsius is equal to minus 23.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how cold it's gonna get tonight. I think Old Blue would be fine if I, if I turned the engine heater on two hours before I started. I think it would turn over just fine in the morning, but I'm more worried about my fuel. At that temperature, the fuel starts to crystallize if you're not careful. You might not do it in the tanks, but in the fuel lines between the tank and the fuel filter for sure, because that's just an exposed little, little hose, right? And it'll gel up in there and then you'll start it up in the morning it'll run just fine for like five minutes and then all that gelled up fuel from the fuel line will <laughs> sucked right into the fuel filter plug everything up and then i got problems if i leave the truck running then uh the fuel goes keeps moving through those fuel lines right it's through the fuel filter some of it goes into the inner gets burnt some of it goes back into the fuel tanks and then my fuel's always moving and my fuel stays warm You gotta make those tough decisions because it's not cheap to idle your trucks through the night. You burn about a gallon per hour, a US gallon per hour. And then I have to stop for 10 hours. Now, I'm not running it right now, so I'm not gonna, I wouldn't run it the whole time. Uh, but yeah, a gallon here right now, what I just paid at the Loves in Drayton, North Dakota was $4.38 per gallon. Uh, I saw it in Fargo was $4.09 per gallon but i didn't go through fargo it was a little bit too far around to go there it didn't make sense i would have saved 30 dollars fueling up there but i would have spent that money going around to get there so uh yeah 439 that's us it's about five dollars 25 cents per us gallon uh, so just over five dollars an hour to have old blue sit here and purr all night you know 10 hours about 60 it's a lot of money it's over 50 bucks the extra quarter in there is throwing me off right now i'm too tired to do math so i'm gonna cheat 525 times 10 52 dollars and 50 cents 50 bucks battles through the night so that 30 dollars well i didn't say 30 dollars. i did fuel in the u.s so i saved about uh 
how should I save? With 30 cents a liter, I bought 518 liters. I saved $155 Canadian fueling in the US today than if I would have fueled in Canada tomorrow. So you subtract, you know, 52.50 off of that. I still came out ahead with $102.90. Did I do that right? But $103 anyways ahead just for fueling in the US. So the cheaper fuel prices in the US paid for having to idle it if I have to. I don't like doing that, it's very hard on the diesel engine. Uh, it wastes fuel. And for every hour that uh, the engine idles, it just wears and tears at the engine, right? It doesn't like it, but you don't have any choice. It's either that or you're stranded here. And then you're paying for a tow to tow you to a shop just so that it can thaw out, change the fuel filters, and get back on the road and uh, <laughs> do it all over again. Driving up in the cold climates is a little different than driving like in the milder climates. All the way down to minus 25, I'll shut the truck off for night. That's minus 25 Celsius. I keep forgetting that you guys use Fahrenheit. It's such a strange system of measurement to me. I don't mean any offense by that. It's just I grew up with Celsius and Fahrenheit makes no sense. Like in Celsius, you guys know this, the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit, freezing water is 32 Fahrenheit. I don't even know what the boiling point of water is in Fahrenheit. I, it doesn't make sense. It's all odd numbers. 32 Fahrenheit, what? So to me, it's just a little strange. So uh, minus 25 Celsius in Fahrenheit. Minus 25 degrees Celsius is minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so. My point was that all the way down to minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll shut the truck off for night. I have a nice engine heater that'll warm up the block for in the morning. I'm not worried about my fuel gelling at that point, though that's borderline. I could put anti-gel into my fuel as well, uh, if I really want to. Sometimes uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> Most times it does. But uh, yeah, each situation is different. Each tank of fuel is different. You know, each refinery seems to make fuel a little bit different for in different regions. You never really know. Better to just play it safe than, than sorry. But, uh, yeah. We'll see. It's going to be a cold night. I'll be warm. And there's a 24-hour building here. So if my truck does shut off for whatever reason, I have a warm building where I can go inside and keep warm. So I'm not worried. In the morning I'll wake up, I'll call into the load gods and just confirm that my load has actually cleared. We'll get going probably around 7, 7.30 in the morning. We'll run into Winnipeg, we'll deliver this freight and we'll see if they have anything for me to do. Because we've had appointments the last few days, it's sort of uh, shortened my week for me. It's very hard for me to get a full weekend when I have to uh, now, you know, take time for the appointments. Not that I'm complaining. I, I, I want to be there at these appointments, but uh, it cuts into the work week, right? So we're already pretty much at the end of the work week. And I was just home and I'm probably going back home tomorrow. And then uh, I'll probably get another week or two of full work in. What will you do? Well, next, next week, mostly full. And after that, about two more weeks. And then I'm off on my paternal leave to assist Brit as she will be very pregnant at that point. She'll need help with the dogs, taking them out, cleaning up after them, feeding them, uh, you know, vacuuming, cleaning around, because she can't, uh, she's a little person. <laughs> and there's a big baby in her. Uh, well, a normal size, but she's a little person, and it, she, she'll need a little bit of assistance towards the end. And also, after the C-section, uh, she can't do any lifting or anything. I have to lift up the baby for her and then put it in her arms so that she can feed it. Uh, so for at least six weeks after surgery, it's gonna she's gonna be in recovery. Now I'm gonna be off for, I'm hoping about a week or two before the delivery day and then about four weeks after to help to help with her. And then from there on, we have some family members that have offered to come in and help out if, if she needs it, depending on how you know, the healing process goes. Ah, so much to learn, so much is coming, and uh, we'll take it one day at a time. This guy's parking over here with his high beams in my face. Look at this guy. He's 
parked over here right by the scale. He's got his high beams on. So we're gonna end the vlog here like this as a friendly neighborhood Trucker Josh reminder. Turn your high beams off, okay? Don't drive down the highway with those things on. Don't pull into parking lots with those things on. The only time you should be using those things is when you're alone on the highway. The rule is, when traffic is coming towards you, if you can see two separate headlights, you're too close to use your high beams. And for traffic that's traveling the same direction as you in front of you, if you can see two separate tail lights on the vehicle, you're too close to turn on your high beams. That's the rule. I don't make the rules, I just follow them and I tell them on YouTube. I don't know, maybe I did make up that rule, but I think it's a good rule. It's a good rule, right? Makes sense. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Hit the like button if you did like the video. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you tomorrow.